All right, hello from Oaxaca, Mexico. If you didn't see my last video, the upshot of that was that I quit my job and left my apartment in New York City to travel the world for about six months. And the first stop is right here in Oaxaca, Mexico. But let me back up. Before I started this journey, I kicked things off at a hotel in Midway, Chicago. And if you saw my Instagram story, you know that I live and die by the hotel pool. And this one did not disappoint. The lighting was weird and the air was heavy with chlorine. All good signs for a hotel pool. These images felt like a hot start to my travels. Our first day of travel was pretty stacked. Woke up at 3.30, flew to Atlanta, then from Atlanta to Mexico City, where security had me dump out my entire bag in the process of hand checking my film. My terrible Spanish did not do me any favors there. Then from Mexico City to Oaxaca, I got to the hotel around 6.30 and just laid in bed feeling on edge. Getting by in another language stressed me out a lot, and it felt like I had made a mistake just even coming here. But I checked my list of essentials and reevaluated. The hostel was having a cooking class at 8, so I went down, had some mezcal, made some emelitas, and talked to some new people trying to make friends. And after that, and a good 10 hours of sleep, I felt better. Shocker. The next day, someone at our hostel offered a free tour of some nearby artisan villages, so I tagged along. I saw a lot of artists working to create alebrijos, or little wooden animals with intricate paintings, but what caught my attention here was the kitchen, where these three women worked every day to cook meals for over 200 people. I then took a bumpy motor taxi to another town to see the weaving market. Felt a little bad that I wasn't keen on making any purchases, but it was my literal first day of travel, so what can you do? We flagged down to Colectivo to get back to central Oaxaca, and then we stopped for Mamey ice cream and to see a graduation. Day one was eventful, to say the least. All right, so for this whole six month adventure, I brought two cameras. I brought my Sony a7 IV and my Canonet. The Sony a7 IV, I have the 24 mm lens, 50 mm lens, and an 85 mm lens, but for most of the time here in Oaxaca, the 24 mm has been getting the nod. 24 mm has been my favorite focal length for a while now, and the streets of Oaxaca are so tight that I think the wide angle really helps things feel dynamic. Now Oaxaca is crazy bright and the buildings aren't that tall, so there's just a lot of light to work with all the time. So I have a 6.6 stop ND filter pretty much glued on to my 24 millimeter lens as well. Heaps of sunlight also inspired my choice of film for Oaxaca. When I was leaving New York City, actually my last day, I finally got my hands on a roll of Velvia 50. So that's not a lot of sensitivity to work with, but because there's so much light here, it's not a problem. Better yet, I was betting that Velvia's innate saturation would be a nice accent to Oaxaca's colorful streets. I spent the next day walking around the city and eating just delicious food. I can't really describe how excited I am to travel and just constantly be experiencing new flavors because that's like my favorite thing to do. Anyways, we got a day of rain in the mix which felt fantastic considering how brutally hot it is here. Sunday we took a bus to Tlacolula, uh, which is a really tough pronunciation for me, but we went to see their Sunday market, which was really interesting. It seems like there's a market every day somewhere around the city of Oaxaca, some more impressive than others, but this one was pretty impressive.
The Sunday market trip was about six days into my adventure and the whole time I was already wrestling with the idea of how do I document this country and its people respectfully? It's no secret that Oaxaca isn't the wealthiest region of the world and these people are just going about their Sunday traditions, eating good food together, uh, just really with a strong sense of community. And here I am with a really expensive camera and just can't help but feel like I'm in their face just kind of flashing my money around or something like that. Uh, and it doesn't feel good and I don't think that these kind of questions have simple answers, but it was just providing a reminder for me to shoot as respectfully as I could. In spite of a head swimming with thoughts, I snapped this picture. It's got depth, plenty of subject matter, balance, and color contrast. There's a lot to like here. A little grainy because I shot this with the ND filter, but not a problem to me. The next day we kept the adventure going with the tour to Hierve el Agua, but before we did that we had to stop at the world's girthiest tree and its friend Old Balls. Well worth the 20 pesos. But the tree was actually pretty cool and I decided that I would snap six photos of it with my 24mm lens and see if I could stitch them together in Lightroom and it actually worked and I got this pretty cool photo of this thick boy. There was a couple additional stops on this tour, including a strange buffet off the highway. This place radiated a stuffy energy that's really hard to replicate, but the food was okay. Anyways, the place is called Hierve el Agua because it looks like the water is boiling, but it's actually just the mineral composition that makes it bubble. The water felt divine here, especially because it was windy through the Sierra Madres, so it felt better to be in the water than out of the water, which is just an incredible feeling. And it was one of those moments where I just was in the water thinking, I cannot believe I'm actually doing this right now. More importantly though, we hit the pools around golden hour, so you know I was cooking. Of course I snapped a few film photos here too, but the first two didn't quite hit the mark. This guy in front here ends up being distracting rather than supporting, and I think the second one is a bit too shadowy to really let the highlights pop off. Even with Velvia's awesome color rendition, it didn't quite do enough, but I did hit the lower pool and snap a couple detail shots that I think are much better. The next few days were pretty low key and I dug deeper into Oaxaca's gastronomy with the street food tour. Oaxaca is overflowing with delicious food but they also have a lot of awesome drinks too. They have tate which is cacao water with corn flour. It tastes better than it looks. They also have aguas frescas which is really just flavored water with sugar but it's fantastic and I think my favorite was probably this guava one. I ate a ton of mole in Oaxaca, I even did a tasting to try seven different kinds at the same time and I really like the Coloradito one the best if I remember correctly. Oh, and I ate some really, really meaty chapulines and they were tastier than I thought they'd be. Enough of that Anthony Bourdain shit though, it's time to move on to photos from the streets. These are cool and I think they show off Oaxaca well, but I think they're a little bit generic to me. A lot of my timing was off when I took these film photos and my composition suffered as a result. Like here and here where people should be contrasting against the walls, but instead they're muddying the door frames. Now when I actually came to Oaxaca, I had a self portrait in mind with one of the colorful walls. So one afternoon I did pick out a pink wall and it came out okay. My smile is a little goofy, but it's a good memory to have. 
One night in particular in the back half of our trip, I witnessed such a gorgeous sunset that it actually seduced me into trying to handheld the shot at f1.7 and one quarter of a second. And to my surprise, it's actually pretty clear. With just a few days left, I made a trip up to Monte Alban, which is about 300 meters above the valley floor uh, with some ruins of a city from, I guess, 500 BC or something like that. While it was interesting to be in a place that ancient and learn some of the history, visually it wasn't my kind of location. Or maybe it's because I was baking in the sun at 95 degrees with zero shade. Either way, I took some pictures, read some plaques, and carried on. Yeah, so those were pretty rough and my time in Oaxaca was almost up. All in all, I probably didn't get as many photos that I liked that I would have wanted out of this trip, but I did get a few slappers. I think this one from the market is decidedly the best photo that I got, and I also like some of these from here about Agua, but my only hesitation is that I'm banking on the panoramic view as a bit of a crutch. I think it's interesting in this location, but I don't want it to be something that I bank on for every interesting scene that I come across to try and guarantee myself something. As far as the role of El goes, I really like the shots from here about Agua. I think that's exactly what this film is meant to be used for, where everything kind of has a similar shade of lighting on it, so you can just get all the detail and not lose anything to all the shadows. I also love this picture of the yellow building with the blue background. I think it's just kind of, again, a picture that was almost made for Velvia in a sense. I also didn't give the limited latitude of slide film enough respect, and I think a lot of the shots where I anticipated there to be nice shadows, there was extreme amounts of fall off from the Velvia, and that's really just on me for not respecting that enough. The Velvia really murders the shadows, and that's kind of the opposite of what I do, where I usually like to preserve those shadows and show off that detail. So that was Oaxaca. I'm feeling a little bummed out that I'm restricted to shooting film on a 40 millimeter lens, but that's life right now. So we're just gonna have to keep on rocking with it, keep on adapting and try and find some slappers in that focal length. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Oaxaca was absolutely beautiful. The food was like some of the best I ever had. And it is such a cool city to visit. Uh, the people there are really inspiring with the way they stick to their culture. Uh, and I really just never experienced anything like it. It was such a pleasant first out of the country experience. So I'm stoked to keep on traveling and experience more of that. Anyways, I'm gonna quit yapping and start grinding on this video. So see you guys in the next one real soon from a new country. Peace.